In today's episode of Ask a Recruiter, I'm going to answer a question that could impact every single one of you. And that's, will my salary be less if I work with a recruiter? So if you work with a headhunter or a third party agency recruiter, when you're applying and you're interviewing for a job, will you make more money, less money, or the same amount of money? I'm gonna answer that now, let's go. Now, first things first, this is a really good question because it's going to impact how you approach your job search. If you were to make less money if you partner with a recruiter, you'd probably be a lot less inclined to do that. And on the flip side, maybe if you made more, you'd be more inclined to do that. If the access to opportunity would be different, that might also impact how you approach it. So first things first, this is a really relevant question and it absolutely makes sense for you to know the answer. So the short answer is no, you're not gonna make less money. And, and here's why, I'm gonna explain the model. Most headhunters, third party recruiters, agency recruiters, they work on what's called a contingent model, meaning they charge their client 25% of first year's compensation um, in order to hire one of their candidates. So let's just say you're a candidate, you're making 100K for easy math. Um, if you're presented by a headhunter or agency recruiter and the company, their client decides to move forward with you, they would then owe that recruiter, the agency recruiter, $25,000. Most of the time it actually goes to their company. So the recruiter isn't making $25,000 when they place you, they're making far less than that. The company is making 25,000, but it is not taken from you. It is not taken from your salary. It is not like, okay, it's gonna be this minus the fee. It's not baked into it. Those are separate things. So your salary is a number that you're gonna be comfortable with. You, um, you negotiate, you say, and then the fee is separate than that, um, but it is, you know, in relation to that, right? Because it is a percentage, but it does not take away, it is in addition to your salary. Now, if anything, you're like more likely to make more because the recruiter actually gets paid based on first year's compensation. Now, I work for a company and we don't get paid on first year's compensation. So we're not li likely to do this, this just isn't our model. But in prior companies I worked for, the recruiters would actually be motivated to get candidates a higher salary because then they would get paid more money. I mean, think about it. If you you could get a salary of 80K or 100K at 25%, the fee that the recruiter or the recruiter's company would get would be 20 and 20, uh, 25K respectively. So they are actually gonna make more money if you make money. So it's actually quite the opposite. Some people have this feeling that, well, if I work with a recruiter, I'll probably get a smaller salary not true. If anything, you might have a slightly better chance of getting a better salary. Now, that's not the only thing to consider. Um, this is a big however. However, all things being equal, right? If you had two identical candidates and they, they had the exact same skills and backgrounds, most companies would prefer to hire someone not from an agency recruiter if there's this massive fee associated with it, right? So. If you are a candidate and you have a great set of skills and you're, you know, they're having a hard time hiring, it's probably not gonna factor in at all, right? I wouldn't say don't work with a recruiter because of that. I'm a recruiter. Um, I, wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't advise that. But if you're in an industry where there's a ton of people and a ton of applicants, um, you know, you just think about it. Would you rather as a company pay 25% or not to pay 25%? So that's something you might wanna take into consideration. Now, another thing, this is another thing that you should absolutely take into consideration and it's access to opportunity. And then once you have access, what does that pathway look like? This is another benefit to working with recruiters. Recruiters often have access to opportunities you would not otherwise be aware of. So I have all kinds of companies come to me and they just tell us to go find them a person, right? So that is not posted anywhere. It's not on the company's website. It's not an Indeed. Um, it's not on Monster. It's not on LinkedIn. It's purely Ben. You've worked with us in the past, you find us people, we'd like you to go find us this software developer, right? And the only way, the only way you're gonna get that job is if you work with a recruiter who has access to opportunity. Also, often recruiters have a really good relationship with the hiring manager they're working with. If the, rec if the uh, hiring manager says, look, I wanna work with Ben, I've worked with Ben in the past, he's placed with people with me in the past, well, what does that tell you about uh, my influence? Well, I'm probably trusted. They're probably really interested in working with me. And if I submit a candidate, they're going to consider them. Whereas if you apply and you just end up in an ATS, well, I don't have to tell you. That can be terrible. But there's a big difference between applying and finding yourself in an ATS where a hiring manager might never see you and you entering up like right at the top of a hiring manager's inbox with a recommendation from a recruiter they've partnered with in the past and they know. That is a huge benefit. So when you think about access to opportunity, as well as like the straight away 
way that you can get right to the top of their, uh, their inbox, huge benefit to working with a recruiter there. One last piece of advice, when you're working with recruiters, be firm, right? Um, we're talking about salary here. So I wanna address it from a salary perspective. So you're talking with a recruiter, they say, hey, I like your profile, I might have a few opportunities that are a fit for you. You need to give them two numbers. One, this is your drop dead number. So this is the number where like, look, Ben, I don't even wanna hear about it if it's not at blank. If it's not at least this or higher, I would never move. So don't waste my time with any opportunities below this. The second number, that's a number where you're like, Ben, I would absolutely move for that number. I wanna hear about it at this number and I'd consider it if there's a bunch of other things about it that are exciting, but if it's at this number and everything else checks out, it's a good company, I like the people, yada, 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 whatever matters to you, I would move for that number. Give them those two numbers, bare minimum, I would move for it. Beer, champagne, maybe, definitely. Make sure they know those numbers that way when they get to the end of it and you're getting an offer from their client, there is much less likelihood that it's below that number because you said, Ben, it's gotta be up here. If it's not up here, I don't wanna hear about it. There you go, that's everything. If you're not subscribed and you like this video, just know that I come up with three videos a week just like this one, slightly different, it's not a duplicate. Um, but hit that subscribe button, turn on your uh, notifications, hit that like button, leave a comment below, I will respond if you were not new. Um, I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope you're having like a great week. I hope you walk outside, you find $20. I hope someone brings you like an extra coffee. Um, I hope you go out to dinner and the chef is just having like the night of his or her life and you have an amazing dinner. Thank you for watching all the way. Good luck in your next interview. You got this.